Introduction As you go for the deep research on something, it is important to know about the basics on say, so that which can help in better understanding of whole of the concept, and same is the case here, and is going to be repeated. Before going over to study the history of Israel, it is important that you get to know about this country, Israel itself. So starting over with this Israel, which is also popularly known by the name of State of Israel, is a country situated in Middle East, which can be found over on southern east and northern shores of Mediterranean and Red Sea, respectively touching those borders of Lebanon by the north, Syria by northwest, Jordan by east, Egypt by southwest, and also to the Palestinian territories and Gaza Strip by east and the west. Capital of this state is Jerusalem, the one which is declared by the government, though there is not any kind of authority recognized from the state yet. Along with that is the financial capital, which can also be called as the technology center, and is named as Tel Aviv. Moving forward, if we talk about the population in here, according to Israel's Central Bureau of Statistics in 2016, the total number of people in Israel is being counted as 8,541,000. This country is being considered as the one having Jewish people in majority, counting 6,388,800, or one can say, 74.8% of total population there is being designated as Jewish. Next to that, the second group of people in majority is those of Arabs, counting 1,775,400 people, which include Druze and those of East Jerusalem Arabs among which most of those Israeli Arabs are actually Sunni Muslims, also including those semi-settled Negev Bedouins, and the remaining ones are being counted as Christians and Druze. Also, there are many of those other minorities, which include Samaritans, Armenians, Arameans, Assyrians, Circassians, Maronites, Dom people, and also the Vietnamese. This doesn't really end here, as there are more of the people which Israel is holding, such as those who are seeking asylums from Africa and Asia, or the one who works in foreign country but do not have any citizenship, which also includes illegitimate refugees from Eritrea, Sudan, or sub-Saharan Africans. According to those rudimentary laws, government of Israeli call themselves as that Jewish and democratic state which is highly developed and also a member of OECD with that 35th largest economy in the world. In addition to that, this country has that highly skilled workforce which is always there to get them benefited in different fields. Talking about education... This country has also been counted as one of those highly educated countries, having maximum of those people holding territory education degree in hands. Well, when it is about Israel, one should definitely know that there is nothing less in success and development they are going to learn about this country. So, moving over to the next, this country is the one which in Middle East has been counted as that highest ranking, having best standard of living and third highest in Asia. There are those larger number of expectancies from this part of the world, and reason is no far a secret by now. Or is it? Well, there are so many of those secrets that this country is holding within, and obviously an interest to read about, which at major tells people about how this country actually came into existence, and what are those many of the different happenings that it has been following since 1948, year of independence, over to reach the speak of success today. No doubt, this is not easy to be counted among those highest ones when it is about education and lifestyle. Chapter 1 What is the history related to Israel? Now, this is the thing which holds over that concept of Jewish and modern history in the state of Israel. Modern Israel and West Bank are said to be situated at the site of ancient kingdoms of Israel and Judah. Also, it is considered as that place which gave birth to Hebrew language and Abrahamic religions, including the sites linked to Christianity, Islam, Judaism and many others. 
Israel was ruled by many of those different territories and also has been home to varieties of community groups, which made whole of this community go primarily Jewish until that third century, moving forward which changed to become mostly Christian and then Muslim in seventh century, which lasted till the twentieth era. In the year of 1096 and 1299, this area was concluded as a focal point where there was a frequent conflict between Christian and Muslim community, at the end of which it became the part of Syrian authority. There was one national movement named as Zionism, which at first came into existence in late 19th century. As soon as the British took over the Ottoman Empire, there were those more of the happenings which took place in continuity, including the Balfour Declaration in World War I, and also the increment in formation of Mandate of Palestine, which in other words can be said as the Jewish action of coming to the land of Israel permanently, which as a result led to the increase in many of those problems between Arab and Jewish, causing collision in their national movements. In 1948, as Israel finally got their independence, there were those huge numbers of Jews who migrated from many of the countries, like Europe and Muslim countries, and also there were huge migrations of Arab people from Israel, which also led to the conflicts between them. So, all in all, one can say that there are total of world's 43% Jews who reside in Israel today, making it the top and largest Jewish community in the world. Moving forward to more of the details on same, in 1970, United States for Israel became the supporter in military and many other purposes. And then in the year of 1979, an agreement of Egypt-Israel peace treaty based on Camp David Accords was signed so as to maintain peace between the two nations. Similar to which there were so many of those other agreements that were signed between Israel and different nations, such as in 1993, Oslo I Accord was signed with Palestine Liberation Organization, which then led to the discovery and establishment of Palestinian National Authority, and then in following year of 1994, an agreement named Israel-Jordan Peace Treaty was signed. Though there were agreements signed between Israel and different nations so as to maintain that peace within, but there were those so many conflicts that can be seen between Israel and national and international countries related to politics or economy. Chapter 2 History from Ancient Times Now, as you know the highlighted points from the history of Israel, this is the time when you should look up for the happenings from ancient times about what all took place in there. It is about 2.6 and 0.9 million years ago when there were many of those happenings about people shifting from Africa to Levant, everyone having those different cultures within, flint artefacts of whom were found in the territory of Israel, and also following those many of those oldest stone tools which were found at Giron. In addition to this, there are many of those other groups that were found around 1.4 billion years old, such as Akulian industry, the Bizat Ruhama group and Geshep Not Yaakov. Also, following this in Carmel Mountain range, there were those early human remains found with the skeleton of Neanderthal female, also known as Taboom, first, that is regarded as one of the most important human fossils in the world. This process of digging the earth up in El Taboom produced that longest record in the field of stratigraphy coming up with the report of having 600,000 or more hairs of human activity in that region from those lower Paleolithic to the present-day activity, indicating that millions of years of human evolution in that area. Now, talking over the times when this name Israel came into existence, is in Meneptah's tell founded for ruler of Egypt, Meneptah, son of Ramses II. According to William G. Diva, Israel is nothing more than a cultural and political entity in Central Highlands, which can also be said as that ethnic group at most and not some kind of state with proper organization and main tenants. People who belong to Israel included Semites to Canaan and Sea Peoples too, on which McNutt says that it would be good here to assume that during Iron Age, most of the population began themselves to get identified as the one in Israel departing oneself from Canaanites through those marks of prohibiting intermarriages and focusing over the family history, 
and also the religions which they belong to, so as to go for the same and doesn't get out of track. The very first use of graphene-based writing came into existence by the area having Canaanite people resided in Egypt. One can call this writing as a base to many of those modern writing styles. Evidence of this writing, which is also known as Classical Hebrew, is known from about those 1000 BCE, written using Paleo-Hebrew alphabet. Villages at that time were having that population of 300 to 400 people, which used to have their own source of making living, including farming and herding, making them self-sufficient, with no chance of having economy-related problems. So, one can say that writing, at that time, was just used for the recording purpose, no matter if it is being used in some large sites or the smaller ones, indicating that any kind of archaeological evidence can be assumed as some kind of society having small villages with not so many numbers of those resources and population. Among these old times of Iron Age, there were also some of the links between Israel and Judah kingdoms. By the period of 10th century, there was that special importance given to Kingdom of Israel, indicating about how important role it was playing in everyone's life there, and this was all before falling of this power into the hands of Neo-Assyrian Empire in late 722 BCE. And in mid of all this was the Kingdom of Judah, neighbour of Israel from south, which came into existence in 8th or 9th century BCE and enjoyed their success as a client state, at first with Assyria and moving forward, which got good with Babylon, and all of this got good before that war against Neo-Babylonian Empire that completely devastated it in 586 BCE. And this destruction of Babylon to Persian made many of those people basically Judeans returned to Jerusalem, initiating the formative period in the growth of a unique Judahite identity in the Persian domain of Yehud. Now Yehud was the one which was already overtaken by Hellenistic kingdoms following the downfalls of Alexander, but all of these continued till that 2nd century BCE when the Judeans finally fought against Seleucid Empire of Hellenist and thus succeeded in creating that Hasmonean kingdom on their own which was considered as that last independent Judean kingdom. This kingdom finally came to an end at 63 BCE, with its breakdown by Pompey of Rome. There were those huge number of disturbances caused to the kingdom of Israel as a result of installing of clan kingdoms in Herodian dynasty, including destruction of temple, first war between Jewish and Roman people, and also the appearance of rabbinic Judaism and early Christianity. There were those many of ages that this Israel and Judah territory has been through, which includes Iron Age 1, ranging from 1200 to 1000, Iron Age 2, ranging from 1000 to 586, Neo-Babylonian, ranging from 586 to 539, Persian period from 539 to 332, and also the Hellenistic period from 332 to 53. Iron Age 1 According to McNutt, as already discussed above, it was during this age only when most of the population began identifying themselves as Israel people, in other words, which is also known as Israelite, differentiating themselves from those and other people in terms of their religion or many other decision-making ideas. Also, along with that, it is believed that at the end of Iron Age I, there was that huge increment in number of villages, and also the population there, which was at the time of Late Bronze Age, was just 25 villages, and at the end of Iron Age was 300. Also, the population doubled in numbers from 20,000 to 40,000. More of those villagers were on the northern side, who left none of their remains to be traced as whether they were Israelites or not. As this Iron Age approached to the end, there was more of the Israel being spreaded all over the area. Iron Age 2 
For two long centuries of Iron Age, too, there were those not so much favourable climatic conditions which led to the growth in population, settlements and trade all over the area that resulted into the alliance in this territory with city of Samaria as its capital. And all of this happened by the mid of 10th century when a legend of Egyptian pharaoh, Shishka, is believed to be recording a number of campaigns that were focused to the area. Then, moving over to the period of 9th century BCE, this was the time when Israel got appeared with proper clarity, and also this very time, Shalmaneser III, the Assyrian king, named through his enemies at the Battle of Karkar. Also this time, Israel got engaged in many of those competitions, including one with Damascus and Tyre for the control of Jezreel Valley, second with Galilee in north direction, and also the third one with Moab, Amman, and Damascus, so as to get control over Gilead. Moving along in the 7th century, there were those people of Jerusalem who grew up to really big, with great number of population in comparison to what it was earlier, making that clear authority among its neighbour countries. And all this happened at the time when Assyria was destroying over the Israel, so as to have that control over whole of that place, and get Judah established on there already controlling the valuable olive industry. Within some time, there was that Judah already working out as an Assyrian state, but it doesn't settle there for so much long, as in the mid of 7th century Assyrian at sudden collapsed, and the conflict between Egyptian and Neo-Babylonian Empire for getting the control of a land made Judah get destroyed at whole between the period of 597 and 582. Babylonian period. This was the period during which there was that huge failure in terms of both of economy and population in comparison to those other previous periods, which also made them lose the Negev, the Shapla, and also the part of Judean hill country including Hebron. Also during this period, there was that huge effect on Jerusalem that made it much smaller than it was in previous time, which made the town of Mizpah in Benjamin to become the capital of new Babylonian authority, Jehud. Also, while all this was going on, there was that strong expectation that the temple of Bethel in Benjamin substituted the one in Jerusalem, so as to upsurge those number of Bethel's priests in comparison to that of Jerusalem. This ruling of Babylon not only destroyed the Jerusalem and its temple, but also the whole organization which made Judah to remain there for centuries. Following all this, there was also that strong belief known as Zion theology, according to which Jerusalem had been chosen by the God of Israel and also the Davidic dynasty would rule this place forever. And now, as the Babylon was taking over whole of the kingdom and making city fall with no further kingship from Davidic, all of the exile community, including king, priests and prophets, started looking forward to the new concept community, faith and politics, which would be all according to the new ruling power, which made them get belief in Hebrew Bible along with all of the exile community. One can say that exiles in Babylon were all responsible for making people learn their individual responsibility and also the concept of universalism, according to which it is believed that God controls the world. Persian period Now, as the Babylon fell to Cyrus in 539 BCE, it made Judah become that executive partition within the Persian Empire. Cyrus was the one who succeeded in getting that leadership of Cambyses, who at first added Egypt to their authority, which transformed Jehud to that important boundary plain. Moving forward to his death in 522, after which the empire was followed by turmoil, after which in 521 finally Darius detained all of the powers and throne and introduced a modification in those arrangements in administration of the empire, which also comprised the collection, organization and management of local law codes. And then, after 404, Persia at sudden lost their control over Egypt, which made Egypt become their main competition at the outer borders of Europe, and then this caused them to stiffen up their control over other authorities, including Yehud and others. Though all of these made Egypt get conquered, 
but the after that Persia lost its control over every other authority as it got a huge fell to Alexander. Now, Yehud's population in this entire period, or Persian, was not more than 30,000, and following that of Jerusalem, it was no more than 1,500, which were connected by the means of temple. It is also believed that Cyrus, the Persian conqueror of Babylon, made Jewish people return to Jerusalem and also get their temple built again, which was completed by 515. After all of this, in mid of next century, Jerusalem finally got that chance to become the capital of Judah. During all of this, it is also believed that Persian even experimented their ruling with Jehud, but by the middle of 5th century BCE, Jehud became the theocracy which was ruled and controlled by hereditary high priests. According to the history, it is believed that Ezra and Nehemiah made a visit in Jerusalem somewhere in the mid of 5th century BCE so as to restore those walls of Jerusalem getting through the Persian king and the status of governor. There were those lots of tensions between the people already residing in Jehud and those who returned over from those other places to their own, and this is all because the returnees had their demand to rebuild their temple which can make them feel like they actually returned to their own native place. In 5th century, Ezra and Nehemiah made a try to make this place from rivalry to the one with unity and purity, which was inspired by the theories of Ezekiel and his followers. So basically, all in all, during this Persian era, or one can say that during the period of 538 and 400 BCE, there was that huge number of changes, such as foundation for Judaic religion, and also the beginning of biblical norm. Along with that, there was those and other changes such as Hebrew was considered as that everyday language for the Judah people and many others. Hellenistic period After the death of Alexander in 322 BCE, its generals decided over to divide whole of the empire among themselves and Ptolemy I, who was ruling the Egypt, seized for Jehud Medinata but it was already loosened up by the successors in 198 to Syria. Though at first the relation between Seleucids of Syria and Jews, but later on there was that huge conflict between them as a result of which Seleucids lost and there was the independent kingdom of Jewish people, which is also being considered as a civil war by many of those modern critics. The Hasmonean kings were trying hard to make the Judah as it was described in the Bible, such as which included the ruling of Jewish monarchy from Jerusalem and also which included all of the territories that were once ruled by David and Solomon. And so to make this project work, there was that huge conversion of Moabites, Edomites and Ammonites to the Judaism and also that kingdom of Israel which was lost. Then, moving over in 63 BCE, Jerusalem was finally fought over by the major general of Roman, named as Pompey, and thus which made this Jewish kingdom a clan state of Rome. Chapter 3 Rule of Romans As by now you have already been knowing about many of the concepts related to the history of Israel and Jews, and now... Here yeah, you're going to read about its history by the Roman rule, where interaction of Romans and Jews during the time of Roman Empire has been traced. Though there was also that huge correspondence between their different cultures, but all this was carried out before the Christian period. People who were Jewish migrated to the Rome and Roman Europe from land of Israel, Babylon, Alexandria and Asia Minor as there were those huge number of conflicts going on between Ptolemyak and Seleucid territories in the land of Israel itself. Now as they moved over there, in Rome were those best of the privileges that Jewish people enjoyed, and thus which made them become the part of community in proper manner. There was that Roman authority of Syria established in 64 BC by the major general of Roman, known by the name of Pompey, who also defected Jerusalem in 63 BC. Moving forward, in 45 BC, Pompey was defeated by Julius Caesar, who had first conquered Alexander in 47 BC. Now, as the whole empire was under Julius, there were those many of the changes and alterations that were brought up during this period, such as Judaism was now a legal religion in there, 
as followed by the very first Roman ruler named as Augustus. Similar to this, there are many of those happenings in following eras, such as in 40 BC, Herod was considered as the king of Jews by Roman people. In 30 BC, Roman authority for Egypt was developed. In 6 AD, Samaria and Idumea were converted into Roman authority of Idumea. There were also many of those tensions between Jewish and Roman people, which led to many of those wars between them. Under 6 to 135 AD, there was that huge loss occurred for Jerusalem, which also destroyed that second temple, not ending here institution of Jewish tax and Roman colony, named as Aelia Capitolina, which was attempted to be made by Hadrian, was completely destroyed. Around this whole of the time period, Christianity seemed to enter and spread around all over the region, making other religions get neglected. In about 313, when Constantine and Licinus allotted the order about proclamation of Milan, giving that official credit to the Christianity being accepted as that legal religion among all of the people living there. Now, following this, the Roman capital was also moved from Rome to Constantinople, and all this is done by Constantine, and then all this finally led to the Christianity Church in Roman Empire, and also the rites that were being introduced by the Roman emperors so as to make every other person there respect the religion. Now, this was the brief knowledge about whole of the period when Roman Empire actually came into existence. Walking over those deep discussions, according to the Encyclopedia of Jewish People, it is believed that Jews lived in Rome for around 2,000 years, which is obviously very much longer than any other European city. Also, it is being said that these people went there directly from Alexandria, and this is all being done by the dynamic viable interaction between these two cities. Two of the civil wars are properly being explained in the Jewish encyclopedia, connecting both of them with each other, whether one of them took place in Judea between Hasmonean brothers, included Hyrcanus II and Aristobulus II, and the other one took place in Roman Republic between Pompey and Julius Caesar, and in mid of all this was getting over the evolution of Jewish people in Rome, it actually grew very rapidly, as many of the Jewish people who were taken to the Rome as prisoners were set free by them, and thus which made whole of the population get incremented. Along with all this, Rome also got involved in Eastern Mediterranean with the end of Third Mithridatic War when Syria was made that head by Rome. After that, when Mithridate got defeated, there was this Pompey the Great who had a control in its hands to all of the area over there, which also included that visit to the temple which was built up in there in Jerusalem. Moving forward, during the first century, the kingdom named as Herodian was discovered as Roman clan kingdom, and then in 6 AD, these remains became the domain of Roman, also known by the name of Laodea province. Julius Caesar formed over a policy by which Jews were permitted to follow their religious and spiritual practices, which was at first maintained by the first emperor of Rome, that is Augustus, and thus maintained by the people having the control after that to the region. Now this policy by Caesar made Judaism the unique status by which they have now that permitted religion throughout the empire, which was obviously more than enough to have proper status in that city. Talking of the problem between Rome and Jews, this thing actually first came in light when there were those financial crises occurred under Caligula. Now the first war between these two was caused in 66 AD, though which was being kept down by two of the Roman emperors named as Vespasian and Titus. Following which, in 70 AD, there was again a conflict in which Romans ruined much of the temple in Jerusalem, among which many of the artefacts, such as Menaroch, were highly destroyed. As all of this was happening, Jews just continued to live in their lands, though there were many of those other wars taking place too, such as the Kittos War, which took place from 115 to 117. This was the war which destroyed many of the villages, actually 985 in number, and also most of the population from Judea was killed or forced to get out of that place. Now, as people were vanishing out of the Jerusalem, which was named as Aelia Capitolina, people were now gathering into Galilee. 
as the wars between Jewish and Roman people continued for long, long years, from 66 to 135, after this, the name of Lauda province and Jerusalem was changed to Syria, Palestina and Aalea Capitolina, respectively, by Hadrian, and all this was done to remove any of the historical connections of Jewish people from that particular region. Also, the more of the Jews and Jewish people were now only being taught to practice their religion, and then they were banned out from the Jerusalem region. And then they were banned out from the Jerusalem region. While all of this ended, the Roman Empire now brought over the Christianity as their state religion on 27th of February, 380. As many of the Judean people were sent into slavery, there were those many of the people who joined the citizenship of many other Roman empires, data of which can be looked over in the scripts of facts in New Testament. Though they were happy on being relocated to the safe place, but there was also that negative effect which was making them feel like homeless and also about getting away from their own religion. Also, the policy which was passed over to make Jewish people get into the part of accepting those religion practices of Judaism was now not so much in action and seemed to get ended up with the end of wars against Roman. Now, there were many of those Jews who, even after the failure of Bar Kokhba revolt, stayed there in the land of Israel and went through many of the different experiences, which obviously include many of those conflicts against people and territories who visited there to have that control over the area. At this time, there were many of those Jewish texts that were composed in these Israeli cities, such as Jerusalem Talmud, Completion of Mishnah, are the examples clearly indicating the same. Tanaim and Amoriam are considered as one of those most active rabbis, also known as Jewish scholars, who were well known for organizing and debating the law of Jerusalem. One can look of Tanaim decisions in many of those complications, such as of Mishnah, Beraita, Tosefta, and many other are there, among which Mishnah was the one that completed shortly after 200 AD by Jude and Hanasi, and following this, the common trees under Amorium was completed around 400 AD in Jerusalem Talmud. After this, in the year of 351, most of the Jewish population in Sebhoris started a conflict against the ruling of Constantius Gallus, that was the brother-in-law of Constantius II, the emperor, and that, too, is performed under the leadership of Patricius, which was later restrained by the general of Gallus. There was the tradition followed according to which, in 359, a Hebrew calendar was created, which was actually the lunisolar calendar, and was based on math and calculations, rather than any kind of observations. Before this discovery, there was that huge dependency of the Jewish community, which was outside the land of Israel, only on the observational calendar that was authorized by Sanhedrin, as obviously it is necessary to have a calendar for noticing up those dates which can make one know about the holy days. There was that huge danger for any of those who tried to communicate or share their thoughts with each other, as all of this continued. Hillel finally determined to provide that authorized calendar, which was not at all dependent on any kind of observation from Jerusalem. Now, as most of the people were made convinced to get towards the Christianity, there was that one emperor, named as Julian, who rejected the offer to become Christian, and also made many of the Jews' community to get back to their Jerusalem community, so as to live with their own religion, also who made people to get that temple rebuilt for the third time. Julian also worked over the campaign against Sassanid Empire, which experienced a failure later on, and nothing else, and also which made Julian get killed in the battle on 26th of June, 363, which as a result led to the failure of any rebuilding of temple. Due to the Great Revolt in 1st century, and also the Bob Kokhba Revolt in 2nd century, there was that huge amount of destruction in Judea, which led to that huge influence upon the Jewish people throughout the world, and that is because the centre of worship got altered from temple to that rabbinic power. Among those so many Jews, there were some sent as slaves, while some of them got transported as prisoners, some of them linked with the current dispersion, and also there were some who continued to live there in Judea itself, 
and started working for Jerusalem Talmud. Though the Jews who joined the current diaspora got the chance to get into the Roman Empire, which was later restricted because of the rise in Christianity. Later on, there were those many of the Jews which were taken out of the Judea and then sent to those many of the Roman countries, such as in Middle East, Europe and North Africa. Chapter 4 War for Independence, 1948 to Present there were those many of the declarations being noticed by the superpower leaders, such as Harry S. Terman and Joseph Stalin, so as to have that confirmation of having new states settled up and also get all of the conflicts get aside. But the League members of Arab, including Egypt, Transjordan, Syria, Lebanon and Iraq, declined on this partition plan by UN and denounced for the right of self-determination which can allow them to have that own planning of how they are going to make it happen. And this declaration made Arab states march a force against Israel, which gave a start out of that first Arab-Israeli war, adding to the fact that there were those huge number of military equipment already available to the Arab states, which basically means that they were on that top of their offence, making the competitor fall over the knees. Moving over on 29th of May 1948, British people finally introduced United Nations Security Council resolution, according to which many of those equipment were sent across to the Jewish state so that which can match the needs to which the Arab is already having. During this war of independence, Haganah became that Israel defense of forces which was being joined by many of those states who wanted to have independence from all of those difficulties and battles over the religion and region, Palmach, Etzel and Lehi were also three of such states which were fighting over for their independence. As the battle was on the stake, Etzel decided over to bring on the private equipment by the way of water through ship, which was named as Atalena. But as the ship approached over the area, the government decided to not to fulfil their demand, and thus Ben Gurion gave an order to let the ship get sunk. There were many of those Etzel members which were killed in the battle after which many of those Jews members, among which most of them was World War II migrants, began coming back to the new state of Israel and thus joining over the IDF, so as to fight the battle against those who are looking over to have control over the land and the area. Now, as the people of Jewish suffered that huge amount of loss in their territory and also their occupation was destroyed by the Arab people, there was a time when condition actually turned in the favour of Jewish people and thus gave them a chance to push Arab people out of their territory and have control over the land, which was at first under Arab people. 